Thank you very much, Dr. Montero. Um, next, I would like to introduce Sally Eberhardt, who's an Occupy Wall Street activist. Um, the Occupy movement has attracted many young, motivated activists like Sally. Um, her main areas of focus, as far as I can tell, seem to be um, um, Muslim civil liberties, in addition to um, her work that she does in our local Occupy Philly labor working group. So, Sally, thank you. My thought bubble right now is, please don't have me go next, please. <laughs> then I have to say, um, I get, at the end of January, Sam invited, said, oh, do you want to come and do this, this thing on, and you, you know, talk about Occupy? And I thought, oh, yeah, I'd love to talk about Occupy. And he said, yeah, I'll let you know how the panel shapes up. And of course, a month later, he says, oh, oh, oh by the way, Glenn Ford's going to be talking to Pam Africa. And I'm like, oh, please, you know. And then Tony gets up and tells it. So anyway, um, I will try to keep my comments brief, because I think we're very lucky to have such an amazing panel. And you know, I'm an Occupy person. Like, you can talk to me on the streets of Philadelphia any time you like. Um, so I'm going to try to keep my comments brief. Um, but there are three things that I want to talk about tonight. The first thing is the myth of the financial crisis. And I, I love what you were saying about the city and the wealth. The one thing I will add to what you're saying is we have a huge number of the Fortune 500 companies sitting right here in Center City, right? We've got Aramark. We've got, these are all Fortune 500. In fact, most of them are on the top 100. Uh, Aramark, Sunoco, Dow Chemical, right? We've got huge amounts of corporate wealth sitting right, right in our vicinity here. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the, financial, the, the, the myth of the financial crisis. Second thing I want to talk about is how austerity politics have played out here in the city. And there's so many examples, right? But the one I want to focus on is one that uh, the Occupy Philadelphia Labor Working Group, which is how I know Sam and how I know a lot of people sitting in this room, that we've been focusing on uh, with the coalition that we've built, which is the schools crisis. And again, crisis in location marks. Um, and, and the havoc and the, the decimation that it's, that it's wreaking on the children's backs, uh, the children of Philadelphia's backs right now. And then the final thing, because I don't want to be a prophet of doom and, and gloom, and especially because I'm here to talk about Occupy, is to talk about that there has been an amazing pushback. I think the doom and gloom side of it is that we've had a pushback and it's just going to have to get bigger because they're not going to stop. And They've even told us they're not going to stop, right? I mean, when the Schools Reform Commission made its decision, they've already told us they're going to cut more schools next, next year. So they're not ratcheting down. So if anything, all the coalitions that we've been doing have been great, and we're just going to have to keep ratcheting it up. So um, to start off with, uh, I was telling Sam at the beginning, uh, when I started to get my, my notes together, uh, the Philadelphia Inquirer, not exactly a bastion of radical political thought, did a lot of my work this week. Um, article yet yeah, uh, on Thursday, people might have seen, rich getting richer, everyone else poorer, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to go to a, a worker's world or whatever. You can get this stuff right in the pages of the New York Times and the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, the article goes into detail about, um, I don't, um, people in this room may be aware, the Dow hit an all-time high at the beginning mm -hmm. of this month. Mm -hmm. It also hit a new all-time high on Wednesday. Um, so they're talk they open the article talking about you know, people cheering on Wall, on Wall Street as we're hitting new all-time highs on, on the Dow. Um, and it goes on to talk about uh, 1.45 trillion in cash. And these are numbers that are hard to even, you know, what does 4.5 trillion in cash look like? But profits that are going overseas so that they can't be taxed here, right? So you're losing that, that tax revenue. Um, it, they also talk about, again, I think people in this room know this stuff, because you, you don't have to go very far to find it. Jacked up uh, CEO, CEO paychecks, right? These are all things that when Occupy hit the streets in October uh, 2011, September in New York, October here, um, we were only a couple of weeks behind. Um, when these are things that have continued and gotten worse, right? CEO profits out the roof. Uh, corporate profits out the roof. Uh, it's, it's jacking up. But what we have seen is uh, the, the, the push, the, the fight back on the corporate side against, as I said, in Philadelphia, our, our education system. Um, but to get back to this rich getting richer, everyone else getting poorer, um, so there's this cheering on Wall Street, and uh, then the, the uh, journalist goes to Northeast Philadelphia. And of course, in Northeast Philadelphia, they talk to a few people. 
one person on unemployment, a lot of people who have friends who have unemployment know that next, at the end of next week, unemployment's gonna be cut by 11%. Mm. So you know, talking to people, how are they gonna survive? Mm. For people that are living on the edge, you're then getting uh, uh, your, your unemployment cut, that's gonna be hundreds of dollars of people, uh, hundreds of dollars of money for people who are living on a, in a very precarious situation to begin with. And that's people on unemployment, right? There's a lot of people, and I'll get to that because, again, the bastion of radical thought in Philadelphia uh, Philadelphia Inquirer, of big cities, Philadelphia worse for people in deep poverty. Um, so not only are we number one uh, in, as Tony said, not only are we number one in the top, the largest uh, cities in the United States on regular poverty, which is 28.4%, we're now number one on deep poverty, which is 200,000 Philadelphians, right? 200,000 Philadelphians living in deep poverty. And deep poverty, for, for I didn't know what that actually meant, Deep poverty uh, effectively means living, if you're single, living on $5,700 a year. Yeah. Right? Uh, and if you're a family of four, anyone want to guess? Living on $11,700. A family of four, right? I mean, um, so uh, the other thing this article uh, brought up is a study from the Uni University of California at Berkeley. Uh, it did a, a study of income from 2009 to 2011. And uh, it's a jaw dropper. Uh, the wealthiest 1% of Americans captured 121% <coughs> of the nation's gains in income in, in that two year period. 121% of our nation's gains. And of course, the underside of that is the other 99% of people have seen a decline, a steady decline in, in their incomes. Um, the other thing I wanted to say about this article, because I thought it, it really touched me uh, in terms of what we're fighting for uh, here in Philadelphia is one of the women that they interviewed in Northeast Philly, she's a mother of five and she works crazy hours. She gets up at 5.30 to go to Doylestown to work a double shift, she comes back at midnight, she's got five kids. She's doing it in part because she wants to keep the kids in Catholic school. And she said in the article, education's key. And I think for a lot of people, I, I know people I talk to, that's them. They think things are hard, but I can do better for my kids, I can get them a good education. And I think in relative to what we see happening in Philadelphia, that's what they're taught, that's what they're hitting, right? The one place where people think that their child can get out of poverty, education is exactly the place where yeah. we're getting decimated. Um, so um, the other thing about uh, that I wanted to say about um, uh, the, the, the lie of um, uh, this austerity and the fiscal crisis is, you know, all we need to do is look at corporate profits, right? And I'm just going to look at one, ExxonMobil. Uh, at the end of January, people may know, it was announced that ExxonMobil had toppled Apple as the number one most valuable company in the world, right? Mm -hmm. It was, it set its own um, company record and world record, right? We're in the middle, right? We're in, we're in austerity here, right? Wow. They just hit number one. They made 45 billion in profits in the year, and they made 482 billion in revenue, mm. right? Um, and now, again, I think this is a pretty well-educated room. You guys know, these companies, Exxon, uh, Aramark, Comcast, they're getting huge, massive levels of tax breaks and corporate gift tax. And for those of you who didn't know, Pennsylvania, corporations working in Pennsylvania, 70% of them pay zero mm -hmm. in federal income tax. Mm -hmm. Zero, 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 <laughs> right? Okay. What's wrong with this picture, right? Um, these are the last people on the planet that need tax, tax kickbacks. Um, the three big oil companies, Exxon, Chevron, Conoco, they made a combined 137 billion. Sometimes these numbers just seem to wash over. This is a massive profits, right? They made 137 billion in 2011. That comes down to $261,000 a minute. Why are these people getting tax breaks? Why are they getting kickbacks? Um, and one reason they, they argue that they get kickbacks is they say, we need the kickbacks, we need the tax breaks because it helps us create jobs and it helps us increase production. Right? So again, let's just look at Exxon, right? Let's just look at Exxon. The last six years, thousands of jobs cut, layoffs, thousands and thousands of layoffs. And their oil production anyway, they're $370,000 barrels a day lower than they were in 2006, right? But CEO salaries are up, 
profits are up, they're the most valuable company in the, in the country, right? But the myth that they lay down is we're going to increase jobs and we're going to increase production. Neither of those is true, right? And again, I'm not finding this in, you know, you don't have to dig very deep, it's there. Um, I wanted to quote Fortune Magazine, you know, they come out in May with their Fortune 500, which is these lovely Philadelphia companies that are sitting on it. Um, and the editor, when, he, when, the, when the list came out, he said something which I thought was so kind of perfect. Um, he said, corporate America is doing great right now. This is just this past night. The consumer in America, not so great. But <coughs> businesses are doing great. And they've really come out of the downturn, doing things right. They're in good shape. A lot of that has to do with the fact that they've cut back. They've cut costs during the downturn, meaning layoffs, quite frankly. That's why profits are so high. And there it is. You know, Fortune magazine, you know, not Karl Marx, but the guy who runs Fortune magazine, just laying it out, right? Um, and I think that he, he, while he doesn't talk about the tax breaks and kickbacks, I think he gets to a very core thing. CEO salaries up, uh, layoffs up, and that's your formulation. Um, uh, there was an in, a study uh, actually speaking about um, corporate uh, corporate salaries and layoffs. Uh, the top the top um, CEO salaries are directly related to this was the Institute of Policy Studies in 2010. There's a direct relation between those CEOs that did the most layoffs and those CEOs that have the highest salaries. So I mean, again, it's it's right there in front of us. It's, you don't have to go very very far. You don't have to dig very deep. It, it's right there. Um, so that's the bad news, right? That this this myth of uh, fiscal crisis—it's a myth. It's a lie that we've we've been we've been sold a bill of goods that we're all supposed to just accept. Um, here in Philadelphia, the thing I wanted to focus on, even though there are plenty of tentacles that are reaching into all aspects of our lives, is the schools crisis. Um, and. Part of the school's crisis, and I'm going to try to be uh, succinct about this, but I want to just let people know I got my information from an amazing report, which people may know, Too Big to Trust, Bank Schools and the Ongoing Problem of Interest Rate Swaps. This was produced by the Pennsylvania uh, Budget and Policy Center. It came out of there uh, this year. But interest rate swaps is something that people may have been heard about it around. Um, interest rate swaps are what stole a half a billion dollars out of our Philadelphia uh, school district. Um, and again, in the middle of a crisis, right? Um, interest rate swaps didn't exist until the late 1990s. In the late 1990s, uh, the financial industry lobbied in Washington. And they pushed and they pushed and they got deregulation. Uh, of, of laws that didn't even allow for interest swaps. Uh, then in 2003, those lobbyists uh, came to Harrisburg and they did the same thing. So as of 2003 here in Pennsylvania, the sky was the limit for the financial industry to come in and say, hey, let's make a deal. And what they did back in 2003 was, um, was talk to city councils, talk to uh, school districts, and have them, as a way of protecting themselves from future increased interest rates, take out these swaps at a, at a variable rate, agreeing to pay them back at a fixed rate. Now, we all know, this was around 2003, 2004, these interest swaps started, these wheeling and dealing. I like to cut to the chase and say, interest swaps are effectively legalized gambling with taxpayers' dollars. That's, right. that's, that's all that's you really right. need to know. Um, but anyway. Come 2008, what do we see? We see interest rates plummeting to, what, 0.07%, right? A, a hair's breadth away from 0%. Um, and that's when Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs make hundreds of millions of dollars. And whose back is it coming off of? It's coming off of school children, right? This is not acceptable. This is absolutely not acceptable. Um, so the good news. Um, the good news is, I think, that the one thing that, uh, you know, you, there's a lot of criticisms, a lot of them justified about Occupy, but the one thing I think it, it, it showed and helped happen in this country is it was literally a visible sign of people saying enough. And here in, in Philadelphia, we had 
300 tents in, um, in Dilworth Plaza, right? We had the Occupy Philly Food Committee serving 750 meals a day, right? And, and this is the other point I wanted to make about Occupy, whatever you want to say, good and bad about it. We see Occupy uh, Sandy, right? The hurricane came. FEMA, right, in New York and in Jersey, where's, what the hell's FEMA doing, right? The people getting themselves together are able to do it. And yesterday I got an email from a friend who knew I was going to be speaking tonight. He works with Occupy New Jersey. And I'm going to end with this because these guys are going to do a great job. But, so, um, but he wrote to me and he said, uh, oh, by the way, you, know, you might want to mention this. AmeriCorps, federal government agency, mm -hmm. they're pulling out of Occupy, uh, sorry, pulling out of Occupy, because they're doing a better job. Right? But they're pulling out of, um, of the, the, the New Jersey situation uh, at the end of the month, in a few days. They want Occupy Sandy to take over. <laughs> right? And I think that speaks volumes. Because, but, but one last thing I want to say is, I love what Occupy does, and I love Occupy Sandy, what they're doing. But the, the answer is in volunteerism, right? The yeah, answer is right. government services are supposed that's, to be there. That's right? Right. We pay that's our right. taxpayer dollars. That's right. So for AmeriCorps to pull out and say, hey, will you guys pick up the slack? Occupy Sandy can do it because the people are committed and the people you know, know, how to, know how to organize themselves. But that's not the answer. The answer is for the government to be doing the things that government's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to end it there. Uh,
Colgate, who has all kinds of toothpaste and every other kind of poison, mm -hmm. and um, now has a toothpaste that is fluoride free. And uh, you know, it takes money to put fluoride in, and uh, you know, um, and it don't take that much to make it regular like it used to be. And uh, but you know, they are able to get away with that because although we fight, and I see a lot of fighters in this room, and uh, you know, we have a tendency to push things and uh, to the side, you know, I was guilty of that. You know, my issue was police brutality. My issue was, you know, dealing with the elders, so forth and so on. And then when I became aware through move of, uh, you know, really organic foods, and uh, it was a place in Powhatan Village. And uh, when we, you know, were going, I was like, that food is horrible looking. The potatoes had dirt on them. The roots had, you know, the hair like you used to have. People here, you know what I'm talking about, right? And, uh, and you understand that you're not eating food now. You're not eating. You got an illusion of just like Obama is an illusion of black strength. And, uh, you know, the food that we're putting in our bodies, and, uh, you know, is exactly the same. And uh, we have places on one, a seamed, you know, which had pretty good food, uh, cold food. And, uh, you know, we still talk about corporate America. We talk about jobs. We talk about everything that's on that list. And uh, um, since when is healthy food without seeds? Right. Since when? You know, and we talk about, you know, you are what you eat. When you're putting something in that destroy the seed and the cucumber, who the hell, you know, <laughs> you, know, before I, you see me going like like this, you know, I don't run off in the end. You know, um, you know what? Dream of taking the seed out of a cucumber. You know, who will come up with the idea of taking the seed out of watermelons? You know, I mean, it's not that much of a lazy thing because, you know, we have become a lazy group of people. And, uh, you know, we want elevators to elevate us. You know, we want the um, the remote. If we can't find the remote, if it ain't a kid around, then we have to get up off our behinds and go change it. We're peeping around looking for it. They're stealing our strength. And, uh, you know, how many stores you can go to the laundromat? I don't care where you go at. You got some kind of energy drink. That's because the food is depleted. The air is messed up. The water is messed up. Our health is destroying us instead of fighting these. You know? <laughs> what we do, we just go ahead and buy it. And uh, you know, water should be good for everybody. But these corporations that we're fighting on one level, we allow them to get away with the other. Because what we will do, and uh, you know, what's the, you know, Fuji, Get Smart, um, Get Smart. I mean, well, <laughs> you know, the water. And it'll yeah, cost smart. more money. Okay. And uh, you're not going to drink the, um, what is it, Dijon or, you know, whatever the, uh, the cheaper waters is that's getting higher and higher. And, uh, you know, we're not going to deal with that. We figure that the solution to this problem is to go get some spring water. And, uh, you know, um, but the solution to the problem, and I want to remind you, all of them is in plastic. Yeah. Plastic is so yeah. that the <laughs> earth will not accept it. <laughs> you know, the earth will not accept plastic. It spits it out. That's why you have so many factories and dollar stores on the corner that sell you every kind of thing that's in plastic. And, uh, you know, your kids' toys, you know. Um, you know, and, and just about everything is in plastic now. You know, that look like wood. You know, you know. When are you gonna wake up? And then you know, this whole thing about this government and uh, a real good saying is that used to be said. You know, Pharaoh, let my people go. People, let Pharaoh go. These, <laughs> uh -uh, you know, they exist. <laughs> because we allowed them. That's right. That's right. That's the only reason why That's they right. exist. If we know full well that giant, we'll say giant is selling poison food, so I'm going to Whole Food. I'm going to Asins. The solution isn't to go there. All stores should be selling good food, mm. and uh, it's to destroy the people that are selling the poison. Not, you know, well, you know, if people, then we complain because we don't have 
jobs and we don't have money and our money is going further and further down the drain and uh, you know we're talking about getting more money so we can buy some more that's poison you know poison and uh, you know instead of fighting to destroy it you know um I can't express to people enough and uh, you know the fight that we must include in this battle and uh, you know the um, prison to um, this, with the pipeline to prison, the so prison so industrial so complex, so where have all the young folks gone? Well, I'd like to know where the hell all the old folks going to. Yeah. And uh, because the prison is full of them. Yeah. And uh, you know, because the sister that, when you was talking about, the, one of y'all was talking about the sister who kids was in school and she didn't have enough and the father didn't have enough. Well, when you're faced with a situation where you have children and you need to have medicine because you done got cut off and all uh, you know you no longer have that so-called safety net and they talk about taking whatever else that's left and all uh, people are going to do what is necessary mm-hmm. to feed their children that's right. you know people are going to do what's necessary to get that I mean, they, they have movies about it and uh, was it Denzel Washington went in the, ho- in the hospital and <laughs> took it over at gunpoint <laughs> and all uh, you know people are really getting fed up and all uh, what's happening I don't know how many people saw the guy who went to the prison, uh, the head of the prison, and somewhere, and when he opened the door, he lit him up. Colorado. 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 Oh, yeah. I'm not saying that's what we should do. I'm <laughs> saying this is what it's coming to. Yeah. And I'm saying, you know, how many times did you know you hear about the home invasions? It's not behind somebody who's trying to get some drugs all the time, or it's not behind somebody who wants some um, $200 sneakers. It's behind the fact that a lot of majority of times now it's food. And uh, if somebody, you know, don't nobody want to live on the street with their whole family. And if you want up on the street, if they find out you and your kids are on the street, they're going to take your child and put it to some other, and uh, who might rape it, molest it, kill it, or either teach it how to fight against you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, that's what's happening here. And you know, this whole thing about these people in their schools and what they're teaching, you know, um, you know, us want to, we need to learn how to teach our own children. You know, this whole thing about, you know, and I'm saying for those who want to, you know, keep these schools open and uh, who is misleading, you know, who teaching these children that it was right to go over in Africa, great bomb that is right to stand on the land of indigenous people here and uh, and see them and laugh. I mean, you know, the mere fact that you don't even see a so-called Indian before you. And if it is before you, they don't even fucking know it. <laughs> they don't even know it. You don't know it. You know? I'm saying, you know, the whole miseducation of us, we got to broaden, you know, our whole concept. And, you know, and my issue, again, is health, is what we must look at. And uh, because if you look out your door and uh, people talk about every time you turn around, you pick up the paper and somebody, you know, somebody that shot somebody, you know, whatever. The majority of the answers of people being murdered isn't by Joe Blow with a gun, isn't Sister Susie who got tired of, you know, somebody in the slit they throat or something. It's somebody who had breathed the air, and um, you see them ambulance going back and forth, somebody done drank the water, you know, somebody done ate the food that this government supplies us with. And, uh, and the mass movement has got to include these things because if we can't be healthy and fight these things i was just talking with my one of my brothers over here and uh was in a coma five minutes okay you understand what i'm saying about food and we all understand what it is that we got to do and uh, you know sometimes you know i think you know we need to start moving and start standing up and demanding that if whole food saying that they're selling healthy food then damn it put it out there you know not back up and uh, Tony, who was talking about the, um, the situation in the schools, it's each and every last one of our jobs inside this building right here today to get involved in that. Mm-hmm. You know, this is not a black issue. This is an issue where people need to come together. It is a black issue, I take that back. And, uh, but what I'm saying is, when we say that people united can never be defeated, when they see black folks coming, rare, 
Thy fists up in the air because there ain't no way in the world any white woman who has no qualification, if she was qualified, can teach African American studies. Yeah. It is wrong. <laughs> it is wrong. And it's about time that, you know, this ain't a stand we're supposed to be taking by ourselves. Yeah. It is not a stand. We have all got to be with these youth when they stand up and demand that these. <laughs> mm -hmm.